and stuff. Um, I'm gonna need a shirt too for that on uh, my side. Um, the dream was pretty vivid. It was a long dream. I don't really have too many long dreams. Um, this dream was even in consecutive days, and I, I don't think it's the last time I've ever had a dream where it was days consecutively where I went to sleep and woke up and. Um, this is a warning dream. This is a very detailed dream of, of a precursor to a main event that many of you guys know about. So, um, as always, go to the Lord about it. Pray about it. Let God share with you anything he wants you to know. Um, and, yeah. So, the way this dream started out was, um, it was a normal day as far as the setting. There was nothing different. There was nothing going on. That was just, you know, alarming. It was a normal day. I was with my mom, not really with her. She was just in the background doing things. I don't know exactly what I was doing, but I was just doing normal day-to-day -day stuff. Um, during the day, either I heard it on TV or I got a notification on my phone or either got downloaded to me, but I automatically knew that the government, for not really any particular reason, was gonna roll out this curfew. And the government was around the whole, and this was around all of America. This curfew was that I think it was either by 10 o'clock at night, everyone had to be inside. Everybody did. And once again, I knew in the dream, it wasn't because there was some great violence going on. I knew it was just because, hey, let's roll this agenda out, let's do it. And that's what they did. And when I heard this, um, during the day, I became not really frustrated, but I, I became like, you know, that's where I had enough. You know, ever had that feeling where it's like, enough is enough. I'm, I'm not going to take this anymore. Um, that's the kind of feeling I had throughout this whole entire dream. This emotion, this feeling never stopped. And so once I find that out, you know, I'm in a very, just had enough mood and the, and the, the dream switches to a later part of that day where I think I'm either walking around uh, my city and I'm engaging people. I'm actually listening to people to see what they say about the curfew because it seemed like once that curfew rolled out, everybody knew about it. Everybody did. And when I was talking to people about this, I was kind of just releasing some of my, my frustration what I stood for. I was like, this is ridiculous. There is no reason for this. There's a curfew. And the part of it that really got me in the dream was that you're taking away my freedom. This isn't to make me safer. This isn't to make me better. You're just ripping away my freedom for your own gain, almost for no reason. There was literally almost no reason that they gave us of why they're doing this. It was, it was no reason. And as I was talking to people and listening to people, it was like people were just unaffected. People were were it seemed like they were not in a trance but based on how I react and how alive I was and to the point where they had no reaction to their freedoms being stolen away and taken away and how they had no reaction to um, how <laughs> just bold the government was to just say hey we're taking this from you um, was mind boggling to me in the dream, I remember talking to somebody, just letting them know like what I felt and just the adamant and how adamant I was, and they would just respond like, "Yeah, well, you know, it's not. I don't like it, but you know, I'll just deal with it." And I looked at them like, "What do you mean? You're you're just gonna deal with this? This isn't something that is comfortable. This isn't gonna make you. This isn't gonna help your life at all. This is about to strip away your freedom, and they're gonna take more away." And I remember during the whole first day, this is what I was doing. It was like I was being changed scenes in different locations around the, my city and um, doing the same interactions and seemed like literally, literally everybody. I could tell they didn't like it, but I could tell they were so either numbed, desensitized, um, I don't know the other word, not ignorant, because they knew what was going on, but just unresponsive to even do anything they were just lack of care they just seemed to take it um and so that happened just different scenes god was just repeatedly putting me in 
even to where I was talking to family members. And one family member, she was, she was irritated. She didn't agree with it. But in the same sense, she wasn't at that point I was. She wasn't willing to make a stand or say, okay, no, <laughs> I want my freedom. This is mine. You don't, you don't just give me a reason why you have to do this. And when the government rolled it out, they rolled it out so quick. And there was nothing that really happened in America that caused this to happen. It was just a decision. Um, now, I don't know if this is all going to happen in reality. Uh, I know this is probably symbolic. Much of it is of, of what is about to happen. I'm not saying, you know, it's going to be a normal day and the government's going to say, okay, curfew. I don't think that would fly here. I'm sure that they're going to use some kind of catalyst to say, oh, okay, we need to, you know, protect and, and make security around our people to preserve them, protect them by, you know, making everyone go to bed early, whatever, or just be inside early, um, whatever they're going to try, you know, it's, they're going to make it seem like, okay, we need this. They're going to make it seem like we need to have what the government's offering, like they always do. Um, so I'm not sure it's going to happen this exact way, but symbolically it will happen this way. Some of it's literal, some of it's not. But anyways, back to the dream. So during that first night, um, I was put into another group of people at some place. I think it was a shop or something. And I was talking to this guy. He was like doing stuff around the shop or cleaning or whatever. And I was still in my same level of intensity. And I said to him, I was like, do you not understand? I was like, do you not understand that this is going to lead to, this is a, I said, this is a soft form of martial law. I said that to him at least three times. And I was like, do you not understand that this is just a soft form of martial law that they're going to increase? And it was like, he didn't even look my way. He just kept on cleaning, kept on doing his normal thing. And I was like, how can you not be so desensitized and detached? But that's a lot. Of, that's another story of why that happens. A lot of people are desensitized, but it's through media, movies, where they spray in the air or food or water, a whole bunch of stuff, a whole bunch of stuff. That's another subject. But and so when I said that to him, it was like after I said that a couple times, the scene switched. To, I went to bed. Actually, it was the dream went to me where I was went to sleep. So the next day happened. And this next day, I started doing, I, I was still doing the same thing <laughs> to other people. Um, I was still in the same type of mind frame to other people. And, but the second day, it was like I was getting downloads from God, what he was showing me, okay, of what the government was doing behind the scenes and what they're planning to roll out. And this happened so quick. It was like, okay, curfew. Then the next day, it was like, okay, we're going to do this, this, and this. It was like the government's rolling out their plan faster than I've seen them roll out a plan before. So the second day, I was just getting downloads of things. I didn't really see anything happen too much. I did see a little more police. I did see some military, I think. But God was showing me, he was like, they're going to use any type of law enforcement they can. It's just not going to be the police that's going to enforce this curfew. They're going to use military. They're going to use any form. And then he showed me, he was like, they're going to use other people to spy on other people. It was like I was walking down the street and the second day during the daytime and I was walking and I don't know if either God downloaded it to me or I heard somebody, but it was like these two normal people, a girl, I think a guy, and they were doing something, but I just knew God gave me a download. He was showing me like they're listening to see who, you know, is and isn't about this plan. And they looked normal. You could not tell the difference of what these people were doing compared to, let's say, me walking down the street. If it was just me and you walking down the street and I was a spy, you would have never known I was it. And God was showing me that the government is actually putting these pawns or have these people spy on you and listen to just what you say or how you act to see if you're not about the government's plan or M. And you could not, you could not tell who these people were. It was so secret. Sorry, it's discreet. And then he started downloading to me. He was like, 
uh, when the curfew happens, let's say 10 o'clock, because the first night, the curfew happened at night. What happened next, the second day, the curfew became early. I remember the curfew happened and it was still daylight outside and everyone was going home. Everyone, I was going to my home. And I remember seeing police and a military starting to pop up on the second day. On the second day. And also on the second day, God was downloading to me. I was in my home. And I remember looking at the TV and God showed me and said to me, the TV is listening to you. The TV is listening to you. And I was, and I was like, I remember thinking my TV, my TV is one of those, it's, it's a flat screen, but it's not the smart TVs that watch you. But that's all God kept saying was the TVs are listening to you. And that was pretty much the second day. And from there, I think the third and fourth day, it just seemed like they just became dark, dark days. And, it, and this, is very, this is where part of the symbolic part is. It was just dark. I mean, I don't remember too much of me doing the same thing I did the first and second. I just knew there was a darkness where it was a spiritual darkness, where it was chains, it was bondage, it was lack of freedom. And also, it was because there was nobody willing to fight. If you look in the Bible, God says of people to fight against a, a, a warrior a army. If, he, if God can find a few believers, he will raise them up to be warriors and fight something. Whatever is oppressing them, he'll help them overcome. But it was like, there's nobody. There's nobody. I mean, look at David. God rose up David to kill the Goliath. God rose up uh, Abraham to go kill a whole bunch of the people who killed his people. The, the stories go on and on and on and on throughout the Bible. God raises up people who believe. God raises up people who aren't scared and are willing to do something. And it was like the rest of the dream was just so dark. And I could just remember feeling and seeing more military roll out. Um, more police force rolling out. More than just, they were just hanging around people's homes. Like, not out, not inside, but just, it seemed like the police and the military had all the freedom. And maybe that was what they, maybe that's how the government bought them in and got them to bribe them in. Saying that, you will have no curfew if you do this. And so forth and so forth. But that was pretty much the dream. Um, pretty much the dream. And... I remember waking up immediately remembering everything. Um, I usually don't. A lot of times it takes me a... As you, people who've seen my videos, they see that how throughout the day I remember everything. But once I woke up, I was like... I was already reflecting on it and talking to it about God. Um, so I don't know when this is going to roll out. Um, in the dream, I know it wasn't wintertime. But I'm not sure if that's an uh, indication of time frames. I know it was summertime, I know that. It was like now. Um, not saying it's gonna happen now. God does this to show you how close it is to. Um, but that's pretty much it, man. Uh, once again, if you guys have anything else to share, um, please share it. I'm willing to receive anything that God wants you to share with me. Um, you guys have a blessed day. Um, stay focused, stay walking in Christ. I know days are hard, days are easy. Days are just normal. Either way, make God a part of it. Let God dictate it. Let God orchestrate it. Allow God to be a part of your day. No matter if it's easy, hard, if you need help, if you don't need help, allow him to be a part of your life at any given moment. I promise you. Because he'll show up and just say, hey, he'll give you these little signs where it's like, I love you. Or just because you didn't be part of your day, here's a gift. I've gotten so many just random gifts from God supernaturally or just from people God uses for no reason not because I asked for it not because I want it, just because God is with me and he likes to bless his people so you guys have a great day I'll see you later